If there's one man who can make Michael Owen look like a saint to Liverpool fans, it's El Hajiju. His Liverpool story began in 2002. The Reds were searching for a striker to help them close the gap on champions Arsenal, who won the league by a margin of 7 points. 21-year-old Juve had just scored a respectable 10 goals in the French league and had a good press. Liverpool boss Gerard Ollier wanted to finalize the deal as soon as possible, anticipating Juve's breakthrough at the World Cup in 2002. The Senegalese didn't score in Japan and South Korea, but his stock rose as Senegal reached the quarterfinals and he was named the African Player of the Year. Everything indicated Juve would be a success for the Reds when he joined for about 10 million pounds, big money at the time. Things got even better as Juve begged a brace against Southampton on his Anfield debut. However, fans would have to wait a long seven months before Juve would score again in the Premier League and injuries had nothing to do with it. Jamie Carragher later admitted that very quickly Drew became the last man to be picked in training. So bad he was. Drew ended his debut campaign with only three Premier League goals and failed the mission of being the goal scorer Liverpool had been searching for. But not living up to expectations is one thing. Being mean to your head coach, teammates, fans and opponents is another. The massive crack in Drew's character was revealed in March of 2003. In the 87th minute of the UEFA Cup tie at Celtic Park, Drew spat at a home fan. Not unprovoked as the Celtic supported patted him on the head, but ultimately spitting is frowned upon in football. Not for Drew, because his spitting habit would stick. But by Drew's standards, that was just one of the many incidents. So next he took aim at his head coach and club captain Steven Gerrard with threats and blows. When Stevie G told Drew to pass the ball at halftime of a preseason game, the Senegalese blew a fuse. But comically enough, he spoke no English despite being in England for a year. So he flung himself at his French-speaking head coach. Tell him I'll fuck his mother, was the message Drew wanted to pass to Gerrard, all while grabbing Ulien. Liverpool youngster Sinama Pongoli remembers being traumatized by the event. Can you imagine the young ones seeing this and thinking that's what professionals are like at that level? If only Drew could compensate for his short temper by banging goals in and performing in general. But in all of the following campaign, 33 games in all competitions, he failed to score a single goal. Jamie Carragher couldn't believe this as he much later said about Drew. He the only Liverpool number 9 ever to go through a whole season without scoring. In fact, he is probably the only number 9 of any club to do that. Drew's time at Liverpool came to an end after just two seasons, forgettable on the pitch and unforgettable off it. He joined Sam Allardyce Bolton and Big Sam couldn't believe his luck at landing such a gifted player. And for some reason, the cantacker Senegalese took to Allardyce too and even called him his daddy. He was much less complimentary about his Liverpool coaches. Phil Thompson was a joke, nobody really gave him any respect, Drew said about the Liverpool legend and Ulier's assistant at the time. Ulier, who wanted Drew in the first place, wasn't spared either. My problems with him started after the African Nations Cup and never really ended, complained the footballer about the head coach. But it was Steven Gerrard and that halftime spat that really wrinkled with El Haji Drew for years. Whenever his teams faced Liverpool, he was the center of attention, looking for a clash of wars with his former captain. Thankfully, no spitting was involved, although spitting is how Stevie G remembers Drew. It seems to me Drew had no real interest in football, and he cared nothing about Liverpool. The way he spat a huge global of gunky palm at a Celtic fan summed up his contemptuous and spiteful demeanor. Naturally, Drew would take no prisoners and retaliated immediately, accusing Jared of being racist to himself, Liverpool's signing Mario Balotelli and every black player that wasn't English. Jared denied the accusation and as for Mario Balotelli, he actually liked the Italian. A few people have asked me if I saw any comparison between Drew and Balotelli and I've always said no. I've got respect for Balotelli, I've got none for Drew. But in the end, the two at least had something to praise each other for. Jared said that the only good thing about the ugly transfer of Drew was his hard work. He never hit. Drew called Jared a good footballer, but with a caveat. Stevie G was a very good player, but he never did anything for his country. I'm Mr. El Haji Drew, Mr. Senegal, but he is Mr. Liverpool, and Senegal is bigger than Liverpool, and he has to know that. Stevie G wasn't the only target for Drew, as he also didn't forget what Carragher wrote about the Senegalese lack of goals in his autobiography. The difference between Jamie and me is that I am a world-class player and he is a shit. 
the type of shit that writes a book and mentions me all the time. He's a fucking loser. On another occasion, Druff insinuated that Carragher only played for Liverpool because he's a scouser. And in the ultimate insult, the Senegalese called his ex-teammate a right-footed player with two left feet, a hint at Carr's clumsiness on the ball. But Liverpool legends weren't the only people to have issues with El Haji Juf when his Blackburn Rovers teammate broke the leg of the opposition player in what seemed like innocuous tackle. Juf came around and told the poor guy to stop pretending. The rival boss Neil Warnock couldn't believe this behavior and said after the game, I was going to call Juf a sewer rat, but that might be insulting to sewer rats. He is the lowest of the low. Drew responded by saying he couldn't stand Neil Warnock and that he wasn't a good manager. It was only fitting the following year Warnock signed Drew for his Leeds United. By then, the sewer rat got promoted to the status of a matador by his own boss, and their rapper got better. And by that point, El Haji Drew's career had particularly ended, and it was time to draw the line. When asked about his biggest career regret, Drew didn't think twice. The short I regret wearing the most was Liverpool's. If I were to do that part of my career again, I would have gone to Barcelona or Man United. At the time, they wanted me too. If only Drew had been as dedicated to scoring goals as he was to insulting everybody around him. It's telling that his Wikipedia page has a bigger section about his controversies than about his Liverpool or even Senegal years. Most lately, El Haji Juve has been working back home as an advisor to Senegal president, Macky Sall, but his ambitions are much higher. I could easily see myself becoming Minister of Sport or President of the Senegal Football Federation. I don't see why not. People got to know me in a different guise. So don't be surprised to see El Haji Juve in politics one day. He definitely has the gift of the gap, even if his ways aren't always too elegant. Like this video so more people can watch it, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to not miss the next episode. See you in other videos!